Hello everyone, welcome back to another Arch Crew Reaction. I'm Shorty P. Today I'm going to be reacting to Death Battle Aang versus Edward Elric. Uh, Aang from a show I've never watched before, uh, but I do know a little bit about Avatar The Last Airbender. Not much. Um, I know that he, um, the Avatar being that he can control all of the elements in the world. He started off as just an airbender, uh, but he has that special ability. Uh, Edward Elric, uh, I know he uh, is an alchemist. I still haven't finished uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood yet, so I'm not sure how strong he actually got. So this is a lot of this is going to be a surprise to me. Um, I do know he has the ability to uh, do alchemy without drawing symbols, uh, thanks to something that happened in his childhood. Um, other than that, yeah, it's going to be a big surprise to me. Uh, it's been a while since I've reacted to a death battle. Super excited to do this for you guys today. I can't wait to get it going. Uh, I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. Let's just get to it. Uh, while I'm bringing this up, uh, I do real quick want to say, or ask you to subscribe. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. I'm so close, uh, but that's all I'm going to ask you to do today. The elements make up every aspect of the world we live in, and no average person can tame them. But somehow these kids can master them with a vengeance. Like Aang, the Avatar. And Edward Elric, the Full Metal Alchemist. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Heart! Go! <laughs> <laughs> Once the four nations lived in harmony, and some of their citizens could even learn to bend their nation's element. Until the but Fire Nation the attacked. Avatar could I know that means. Four, and it's their duty to protect the balance between these nations. And since there's always got to be an Avatar around, a new one is born whenever the last one dies. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Attempting to conquer the other three nations, the Avatar would inevitably be their greatest obstacle. Man, they'd even go after a kid? Living among the air nomads, Aang was an energetic and dutiful 12 years old when he learned of his destiny. He was the newest incarnation of the Avatar. But he totally wussed out, ran away from home, and got frozen in ice for a hundred years. Damn. What the hell? That's not what I'd do if I found out I was an awesome elemental badass. I'd definitely find a way to make money off that. Boomstick. <laughs> He's 12. Penguin! <laughs> But running away actually saved his life, as the Fire Nation knew the next Avatar would be an Air Nomad and slaughtered them all in a horrific surprise attack. But the poor kid wouldn't be stuck in ice forever. He was eventually rescued by some new friends and began his quest to learn the other elements and save the world. And as an Air Nomad, he can really bend the wind to his will. <sighs> he can use air bending to create whirlwinds and tornadoes Jeez, or slice the through solid stone. And he can fly! Whee! Well, it's not exactly flying boomstick. What he actually does is manipulate the air currents to keep aloft. That's why he carries a glider, complete with snacks. <coughs> Good lord. Oh, well, I'm sure that'll come in handy. That's like he can grow hair, or was that a wig? Like a duck I didn't know if it was a fashion a choice duck. or not. Or I guess a flying avatar guy. But ducks actually can fly. Anyway, Aang can use air in pretty much every aspect of his life. Like for shields, increasing his speed, improving agility, adjusting his body temperature, and even focusing his breath to use as an attack. After he learned waterbending from Paku and Katara, Aang can make whips, knives, and literal tsunamis. Hey, I can do that too. Just give me a pool and watch this cannonball fly. Does that mean I'm a waterbender? Uh, sure. Waterbenders can also manipulate steam and ice. Just like how I, the great waterbender Boomstick the Wet, will use my powers to swim through this frozen block. You what? Mm. Yep. Uh, waterbending 101. Uh, you can be jealous. Oh, wow. I'm just bursting with envy. Bending powers activate! Ah! Ha ha! Success! Like airbending. Water bending requires a nearby source of water to use, like a pond or a filled bottle. The same goes for earth bending, which Aang learned from his mentor Toph. Earth bending is all about throwing rocks at people and a bunch of other cool stuff, like making walls and earthquakes and causing the ground to swallow you up, which is 
kind of creepy, actually. Last but certainly not least, Aang learned the art of firebending from his longtime rival, Prince Zuko. Unlike the other arts, firebenders can actually create fire to use at will. Firebending is so hmm. goddamn powerful. That's nifty. It's even got the deadliest bending technique of all, shooting lightning. Well, only the most advanced firebenders can cast lightning, which is usually an instant kill move. While Aang never learned the move itself, he has learned how to redirect it through his body. But even after learning the four elements, Aang got to meet one last master bender. Who taught him the art of manipulating a person's life energy, the purest form of bending. It's super dangerous though, and one mistake could tear up Aang's soul. And with it, Aang defeated the Fire Lord and brought peace to the world at large. Well, with that and with his super form, the Avatar State. In the Avatar State, Aang's bending abilities grow immensely powerful. This is because the Avatar State lets Aang draw upon the power and wisdom of all previous Avatar incarnations. Hmm. Though it is extremely risky, as dying while in the Avatar State ends the cycle of reincarnation permanently. Oh, so that's a pretty big consequence. Anyway. Whatever. The coolest thing about the Avatar State is it makes you glow like this. Behold! <laughs> How are you doing that? Oh, I, I drink a bunch of glow sticks. I was I, that was my exact to go guess. To the doctor, like right now. <laughs> my liver's processed way worse than this. Well, with or without the Avatar state, Aang is plenty powerful. He has the ability to move gigantic stone columns and even carve canyons around an entire city. Not only has he survived hits from earthbending kings and massive explosions, he threw this gigantic column of rock at the Fire Lord. To get the column's mass, we compared Aang's height against it and determined it must weigh 9,500 tons. Aang's super fast too. With airbending, he can run on water. Which, given his size, requires a movement speed of well over 67 miles per hour. He used airbending to block a it's giant zippy. column destroying explosive attack from the best named character on the show, Combustion Man. <laughs> and he's proven he could redirect lightning from the Fire Lord himself. Taking into account the distance between them and how far Aang's arm had to move to catch the lightning, he would have to react at least 155 times faster than sound. He is pretty unused to violence, though. I mean, he's a vegetarian pacifist for crying out loud. But while he may seem like just a kid, Aang still saved the world and led it into a peaceful future. To him, bending is elementary. If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. Alchemists of old. He's about as powerful as I assumed he was going to be. Not great results. But in the country of Amestris, the ancient science of alchemy is actually possible by using the Earth's natural energy to reshape the molecular structure of various objects. And by drawing a circle thingy. A transmutation circle, which most alchemists use except for the youthful prodigy, Edward Elric. Oh, what a little badass. Careful, Boomstick. He's a bit touchy about his size. <laughs> hey, if I lost my mom like he did, I'd get mad at the little stuff too. But Ed and his brother Alphonse figured they could bring her back with alchemy. So they went for it. But things went south real fast. You know how people say they'd give an arm and a leg for something? Well, Ed literally did, and poor Al lost his whole body. Luckily, Ed managed to stick his brother's soul in a suit of armor. But still, yikes. This horrible experience has forever marked the two brothers. No one is meant to transmute the human soul, and the boys were lucky just to escape with their lives. But he got something good out of it, like super secret knowledge, including how to do alchemy without a circle thingy. He just has to clap instead. So, worth it? With these new abilities, Ed and Alphonse began their quest to restore their bodies. Specifically, they sought the incredible power of a Philosopher's Stone, believing it to be their only chance. Eventually, Ed joined the military, and thanks to his amazing potential, he was named by the Fuhrer the Full Metal Alchemist. Wait, wait, what? Adolf Hitler? Nah, it's just Bradley. <laughs> He's okay. Until he isn't. Spoilers! Also, since Ed lost a couple limbs, he got them replaced with auto mail. Kinda like my leg! Auto mail is made from incredibly durable metal, ranging from his original steel one, to a gas powered one, to his best version consisting of a mix of aluminum and carbon. Apart from being durable metal prosthetics, Ed's auto mail limbs function just like normal ones. He can even reshape his arm as a weapon. 
So we can turn it into swords and saws and stuff, increase its durability by hardening its makeup, or turn it into an umbrella. Ah, truly a limb of many talents. But at the end of the day, Ed's true talent lies not in sword fighting or umbrella holding, but the art of alchemy. He can do all sorts of crazy things with all the elements. He can basically make anything he wants, like spears and shields. So long as he follows the rule of equivalent exchange. Anything created with alchemy must have a source of equal value and cannot be made fundamentally different. For example, lead can be molded into a statue, but it cannot be turned into water. Other than that, there are three principles needed to use alchemy well. Comprehension. Which means you gotta understand what the thing you're using is made of. Destruction. Breaking stuff down. And reconstruction. Putting stuff back together. Ed is only limited by the materials at hand and his imagination. At his full potential, he can do almost anything. He can purify water, create ammonium gas from ammonium nitrate, repair entire houses, and transform nice. a gun into mm. a trumpet. I need Don't to have that guy around here. Try and Got do some house repairs to do. Guns. Anyway, Ed's also learned destruction alchemy, which does exactly what you think it does. Make a big old kaboom. Ed's used it to destroy stuff like auto mail, but it can also be used to explode people. Say, is, did he learn that from Scar? So using destruction alchemy, Ed should be able to destroy something like this on a molecular level. Ha! Or you could just do that. Anyway, with all of his abilities, Ed has done some incredibly impressive things. Not only has he blocked gunfire from a Gatling gun after it started firing, he's dodged a pistol from nearly point-blank range, and his auto mail arm even took a bite from a lion-headed chimera. It was totally fine! Assuming this chimera has a similar bite force to that of a real lion, that means Ed's arm stood up to a force of 1,000 pounds per square inch. He's created a gigantic cannon and then survived that cannon exploding while he was standing on it. And then he survived being on top of a huge boulder exploding too. We can measure the boulder's explosion against Ed's size to get an approximate energy output. With a radius of 36 feet, this blast must have been equivalent to over 100 tons of TNT. How's that That's significant. for equivalent exchange, bitches? He also survived an explosion that took out most of a 10-story building. Even apart from being Ooh. tough, Ed has shown considerable strength when using alchemy. Like when he created a gigantic golem to crush his opponent. By measuring the size of the stone golem's thumb, comparing it to the size of the average human's thumb, and using that scale to estimate the size of the golem, that gives us an estimated weight of over 3,000 metric tons. All this without any Philosopher's Stone, because it turns out those things are really, really messed up. Right. Mm -hmm. Philosopher's Stones are extremely powerful and can be used in many different ways. Kimberly, the Crimson Lotus Alchemist, for example, used one to create a massive explosion equal to 157 kilotons of TNT. However, it turns out that these stones are composed of imprisoned human souls. Mm -hmm. So Ed and Al vow to avoid them on principle. Although Ed can boost his alchemic power in a similar manner by drawing on his own life force, increasing his potential at the cost of shortening his lifespan. But that's what Ed ultimately had to learn, what it truly means to let something go. And so he found another way to revive Al's body, sacrificing his own power for the sake of family. Aww, what a nice guy! But all in all, so long as Ed knows what he's trying to transmute, he's an amazing force to be reckoned with. Now let's go home, together. Hmm. I'm gonna. Right, the combatants are set. I'm gonna put my money on Ed. All possibilities. I think he probably has enough power and counters to counter Aang. And like I said, I'm not that familiar with Aang, so this could just be a ignorant noobish opinion. <laughs> Sorry, Momo. You're just too little. <laughs> little? Who are you calling a pet squeak, you stupid hairless kid? Uh, nobody? I'll show you!
Really like how this fight is animated so far. You know, there are actually a lot of advantages to being short. Because they're doing a lot of... As a five foot five person, Aang's got the right attitude. But it's mostly ranged right now, and I do kind of feel like that's how it would be. Ah! Oh no! I'm sorry. A classic huh? misdirection. That's advantage outrage. Ha! Damn it! My cannon is so freaking big. What kind of alchemy is that? Okay, no more clappy magic. Oh, yeah, that's bad. I don't know about in Brotherhood or if it was canon, but at one point I know he needed his arm to be able to do that. But he was still really fast at drawing circles, if I remember right. Now say, but did it? This ends now. At least I'm taller than you. You left me no choice. I can't say I disagree, but. Because I don't know enough, like I said, but I think I feel like Ed should have put up a better fight. He's got a lot of combat experience, yeah. And I don't think they really showed enough of him using his own life force ability or his life force power. Recall how Ed survived an explosion that destroyed most of a ten-story building. By examining the size of the building and thus the volume of the conical explosion, this blast must have equaled about 30 kilotons of TNT. That's cool, but Aang did way more when he carved up a circle around that city in Avatar State. The force to blast such a huge ravine around the city of Yudao was a massive undertaking. By measuring the width, length, and depth of the affected area compared to the size of the city, we found it would take almost 160 kilotons of TNT to pull that off. But was that more than five times greater than Ed's best durability feat? But was so that an explosion that he took, to or was that just Automatic power that he exerted? Granted, Ed could reach this sort of power by sacrificing his life force. Remember Kimberly's explosion, the one empowered by a Philosopher's Stone, a blast worth 157 kilotons of TNT? That's almost identical to Aang's feat, and theoretically, Ed could have been capable of this level of power. Theoretically. However, a Philosopher's Stone uses many souls, while Ed could only draw from his one. Not to mention, drawing from his own life force meant his power-up had a very short and dangerous duration limit compared to the Avatar state, which has no such limit. But even so, Ed's tactics and creativity kept him in the fight, yet the Avatar's speed, power, and versatility was too much for him. Aang may be a pacifist in canon and would hardly kill anyone, but unleashing his full power is a sight to behold. Just when Ed thought he had the hang of it, he alchemist the mark. <laughs> the winner is Avatar. And All right, well, maybe I need to start watching Avatar. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. If you want the battle, it could be a reaction series. If you guys want that, leave below. a comment down below. If Let me like know what you think. I want to watch it regardless. But... The link over there. All right, this is like my favorite part. That's right. Ah, oh, fuck yes. All right, I can't wait for that one. I gotta, I gotta do some research on Lobo, but uh, Ghost Rider is a freaking beast. Uh, all right, so that was that. Uh, like I said, I lost on that one, but uh, I didn't know much about Aang. I've said that a bunch, but 
I do kind of feel like Ed maybe should have put a little bit of a better fight, but that's how these things go. Um, once again, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe, uh, help you keep up to date with all of our reactions and other stuff that we're doing. Uh, also help me get to a thousand subscribers, which is a big deal for me. Uh, leave a like so that this video gets shared more by YouTube. Um, if you like other stuff that we do and you want to stay up to date or not stay up to date, but if you want to get early access to like reactions and, um, and podcasts and stuff like that, you can go to patreon.com slash RH crew, subscribe. Uh, that stuff usually comes up on our $5 tier. So go check that out. Uh, we could use all the support we could get. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at RHC podcast. And that's where I just kind of chat with people and, uh, do updates. So thanks for tuning in once again, and I'll see you guys next time.